Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Paternity testing, when you hear that, what do you think of? Paternity establishment program, what do you think of? And that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, Lisa Bailey Cawthorn. Cawthorn. Uh, project manager, Virginia Paternity Establishment. Um, and Raven Campbell, operations manager for health information management at uh, Chesapeake Regional Medical Center. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Doing great, thank you. And Terry Haddock, birth register. I gotta ask you, Terry, what does the birth register at Chesapeake General um, do? I actually am the one that I go in and I actually process the worksheet and process the work, um, the birth certificate and get it ready for vital records. So, and then send it all off to Richmond and then it comes to the parents. Okay, because I, let me go I, back 33 years, 34 years ago now. That's not even something I even thought about. We were more focused on, at that time, birthing chair, birthing room, <laughs> drugs or no drugs. Right, right. Um, and it just seemed like it was the bureaucracy to support that, but it's much more than that, isn't oh, it, Lisa? Oh, definitely, definitely so. It's the very first legal document that you're gonna have that sets you up for the rest of your life. And when you're talking about the, the you, that's the little guy. That's the little guy. Let's put mm -hmm. in perspective that this is really about the child and not about the parents. Okay, because okay. you're looking for parents' names. Mom's there. Mom has to be there. Mom right. has, yes. mm -hmm. right? Yes. Right. The last time I checked. Mom is there. Mom is there. <laughs> We've got a changing environment now when it comes to dads, don't we? Yes, we do, we do, we do. And in fact, 40% of all births in Virginia are now to unmarried parents. Okay, and that's something that, that's, no judgment on that at all. No. Those are just the facts. It's a change in the way the world is. So what has that meant to the to the John as we would say in the John Hancock on the form then? Well, it basically means that both parents, we want both parents to be involved in a child's life for a lot of varying reasons. Um, there are health reasons, you know, that the child would know if they, if they develop some sort of a disease. Um, we could go to the family and look for some assistance um, right. from the medical perspective. Um, from a benefits perspective, if something were to happen to that father and the, his name was not on the child's birth certificate, that child would probably have to forego Social Security benefits which could mean uh, the difference between having a great pair of tennis shoes and not a great pair of tennis shoes. Right. Um, and in addition to that, it's just general self-esteem. You would be surprised at how not knowing uh, your parents, your biological parents, can affect your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, Raven, you, you kind of, you have a personal story on that, don't you? Um, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm um, growing up in a single family home. My mother was the mother and the father. Um, I did know who my father was, but he was not in my life. And as I got older, um, I needed my birth certificate for a number of reasons. And my mom sent off for it. It came in the mail. And um, I actually opened it up and I, I saw my mom's name, mother and I saw my father's name. And it, all that hopelessness that I felt as a child not having my father around just went away because of seeing his name on the birth certificate. It gave me a sense of self-hope and it, it made me feel um, like I, I, I do have a father. I do have a father. Mm -hmm. So um, having the name on the birth certificate um, does mean something, the Could father's name. Gave you that completeness. It gave me completeness. I was whole again. Now, Terry, when you are talking to a mom or the mom's parents, let's say, right. at the time of birth, and they don't want to put the father's name. They don't have to, there's no pressure. We just want to give them the opportunity to be able to do it. There are, you know, sometimes when moms do not, or there's times when they don't know where the father is. We always give them an opportunity to come back. We have something that we call a return acknowledgement of paternity and give them that chance because sometimes maybe six months down the road and uh, every day I get a call and they come back and do it. You know, it's easier and better for them to do it right there at the hospital, mm -hmm. but they have, we have another plan that they can come back later and do it. Now that's at, at uh, Chesapeake General? That's at all the hospitals. Oh, okay, so this is this is a system that is statewide, right Lisa? It is federally and state mandated. Oh, federally mandated? Yes, through Parora of 1993. Okay, I, you know, I, I was, uh, I had the opportunity to travel overseas for the first time in my life in mm -hmm. 2002, and I sent off my, what I thought was my birth certificate, 
and uh, it was actually the registration form from the Buford Hospital, <laughs> which was a military, which yeah. I thought, you know, A lot of people anything. use their crib cards, yeah. and that does not mean... Uh, yeah, and they <laughs> said, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Not an official document in the state of Virginia. <laughs> yeah, so what do people do if they're looking for... I mean, they don't have a, a birth certificate. How do they go about... Well, your birth certificate is, hel is actually housed in a sealed file at the Division of Vital Records. So when you're born in the state of Virginia, that's your first contact. Um, and if you have questions about uh, establishing paternity, you know, there are different kinds of paternity establishment. What we represent is the voluntary piece of establishment. Okay. Yes. Um, obviously, there's DNA testing, which you, we joked a little bit about at the beginning right. of the segment, um, but that is real and does exist, and they have opportunities to do that. Um, they can also go directly to the Division of Child Support Enforcement. You'd be surprised at the number of calls my program receives from dads, dads who want to be a part of their child's life. And I have to send them to another division over at Social Services, and and uh, it's called the putative father registry so that they could have their name put on there in case um, you know something legal transpires mm -hmm. with after the birth of the child so there's a lot of benefit to establishing paternity if you're not married um, there's also a big fear of whether I do this what's this going to mean um, mm -hmm. am I going to lose my benefits is child support going to be involved and I want everyone here to know that that is not the case you have to open a case with child support, and mom or dad can do that. Not just because of what's on the birth certificate. When you sign the birth certificate, you're saying that you are the biological parent of that child. Okay. Terry, you'd, you'd mentioned earlier that um, there, there is another second chance. So how, what are, how do you go about getting some of those well, second let's chances? Say, let's say a dad is out to sea, which that's, that's pretty common. Yeah. They're out to sea, and, you know, and they, they are the first ones back. They come, and uh, then we fill the paperwork. I notarize the statement, uh, look at their ID. They both have to tell me, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that they're the parents, um, that the father, and then I sign the paper, and then they send off for it, and then it's added. But they come back, and they're happy to do it. And I'm, I'm glad that we have the opportunity to help them, because they really, you know, they are biting at the bit to get it done. Okay. You're also work doing have some relationships like right, like in Norfolk with uh, the sheriff's office and that I too. I do, I do. Thank God for that opportunity. Um, what kind of reaction do you get though? Uh, <laughs> you know, I have. Um, it wasn't so different for me. I've I've had a a, a jail mm -hmm. ministry and taught classes in the jail, so going to the jail wasn't so different for me. But you know, sometimes the fathers are incarcerated, but they want to be on there, and if. If everything is done correctly and the mom has the information and I have my contacts at the, at the sheriff's department and they verify the information, then I have gone there. Um, you know, my, my job has allowed me to go there and to, to get it done. Great. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just is for, it's about the baby and mm -hmm. it's just, you know, in the long run, Everything here is about the child. Well, I'm going to come back to the, the baby on the sofa. <laughs> then. How's that, Raven? <laughs> I mean, because you talk about the completion, it really is, you know, the, the it's a miracle to be born. It, it really and, is. And it it is. once you had that that completion, what do you tell a, a mom that's saying there is no way to put on the other line? Well, the, the first thing I do when I do speak to mothers who are skeptical about putting the fathers on the birth certificate, I say, you know, think of what it will do for this child, for that child to look at that document when they become a young adult and they see that their father's name is there. And then I give them my story because it's, it's really important that we let the mothers know that it's really important for the children to know who their fathers are. I can't tell you the number of children who actually go out searching and trying to find who their fathers are. Um, I, Lisa had shared a story with me earlier about um, finding out who her father was. So it does leave an emptiness in a lot of people. And um, so it's really important, you know. So fathers, sign the paternity establishment. <laughs> you know, I can't say it better than that. I mean, and it, again, it's been fodder for some jokes, but it's a very right. serious right. topic. It really is. And it's something that really, in, in that situation, 40% in that situation have that have those circumstances worked out. 
Exactly. On the yeah. way in. So exactly. while you're making those decisions about drugs, no drugs, birthing chair, birthing room, or whatever, make sure that you got both signatures. Right. Yes. And we've got lots of great information out there available. We have a website that people can go to to access the information, and hopefully you'll have that information up for everybody. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. When we come back, you will be convinced that opera is the best. Stay tuned.